back off. Sorry. Um, hi, everybody. This is Anna of Mochi Mochi Land. I've been making these little bluebirds recently um, as a stress reliever, a quick thing to knit in the evenings, something cute and fun to send out to my friends to cheer them up during these pandemic times. And I'd like to make a pattern for them. A few people have asked about that when I posted pictures. Um, I, I, I would like to. My time is a bit limited since I am with my kids a lot these days. Um, but John, my husband, just took the kids out of the house and I am thrilled. Yay! So I have a few minutes um, and I thought I could do a little video just showing me knitting one. I may or may not also have the pattern ready right now when I post this, but if you want to follow along, you totally can. Um, it's an intermediate pattern. The most complicated thing is it, it uses some short rows to give the body this cute little tail and then a kind of bend up here. There are three instances of short rows and they're all the same. It's pretty basic really, so I'll walk you through that. And then you do also pick up stitches for the wings. You could knit them separately if you wanted to, but that's the other thing that's a little bit tricky is picking up and knitting the stitches. Um, this is, I think, going to take about 40 minutes. I can, if you're a fast knitter, you can knit one in about 30 minutes, but I think we can do 40 minutes um, <clears throat> with me explaining some steps along the way. So I'll try to explain what I can, but I'm not going to go super, super slow. What you'll need is some yarn. You can use any, any yarn, really, literally any yarn, but I'm using Knit Picks Palette Yarn. This is in the shade of Caribbean. I even know what it's called. It's a very, very pretty blue. Um, and that's not what this guy is. These are two different colors. This one's Caribbean. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn. It's all wool. Fingering weight will give you a little bird about this size or a little bit bigger. I'm kind of a tight knitter, but you can use worsted weight yarn if you want. For the fingering weight, I use size one, which is 2.25 millimeter double pointed needles. I like these bamboo ones. This one's actually like quite bent but that's fine. Um, you'll need a little contrasting yarn for a beak, a little black yarn for eyes. This is Cascade Heritage, this awesome orange. I love this orange so much. And some stuffing. You can use anything. You can use yarn scraps, that's fine. That'll work fine for this, but this is polyester fiber fill. Some scissors. You'll need a little tapestry needle. I like this little skinny one. I do sell these actually in my shop. But you can use a thicker one too, it doesn't really have to be the tiny kind. So let's get started. We will start by casting on three stitches onto one needle. I do my long tail cast down like this. Apologies for the dry, cracked crow's hands. Everybody's got them. <laughs> needle under here around and dip under. That's how I do my long tail cast on. You might do yours a different way. You could maybe do a backward loop cast on. I think that would work fine too. I might ex knit one extra row if you were doing that. Okay, you just cast on the stitches. Don't turn. Slide the stitches to the right end of the needle. You're going to work the first row like an I-cord, which means you just knit them using the working yarn that's attached the leftmost stitch and now I'm like oh I need to look at my actual hands and not through the screen maybe. I do not typically take videos while I am knitting. I don't even teach that often but sometimes I do and I do enjoy it when I do. So that makes a little little nub that's going to be the beginning of the tail. For the next round you're going to do the same thing um, working it as an I-cord, I mean, and you will do knit front back in each stitch to increase from three to six stitches. Slide the stitches to the right. So knit front back, super basic increase. If you don't know it, you knit, you leave the stitch on the left needle and then insert the right needle through the back loop, trying not to split the yarn. And here we go. 
and then knit again through the back loop and this time pull the stitch off the left needle. We'll do that three times that will give you six stitches. You could work the next round also like an I-cord, slide these stitches down again. I'm going to go ahead and distribute my six stitches onto three needles. This row, or round, row, I always say row when I mean round, and vice versa. This round, you're just gonna knit. So knit six stitches, knit six stitches. That could definitely be a tongue twister. Let's see, what would be a good tongue twister with that? Um, need an N name, not like Nancy though. It would have to be like, knit, knit. What kind of name starts with knit? Natalie knit six stitches. Oh, never mind. I can't both knit and invent tongue twisters. Let me know if you come up with a good one. Ingrid knits it. Ingrid knits it six stitches. Maybe Ingrid is a good. Or I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> So I've just knit six stitches, and next row is um, an increase row. Sorry, I have this pattern memorized, but I'm not used to like talking someone through it. It's going to be a knit front back, knit one around three times. So you'll increase from six stitches to nine stitches. That knit front back we did before. nine stitches. Next round, increase to 12 stitches. Knit front back, knit two on each needle. stitches. Next round we're increasing from 12 to 18. It's going to be knit front back knit one around. Normally when I am knitting, I am either watching TV or listening to podcasts. I have a lot of favorite podcasts. Reply All is great. Everybody, well not everybody, but many people know Reply All. Um, there's a sleep podcast called How To with Charles Duhigg. It's kind of, it's not always my favorite, but they recently had an episode about what we can all personally do for the planet for Earth Day, and I really liked it. I, enjoyed, I appreciated the perspective. Um, okay, 
18 stitches, now we're gonna knit two rounds. Basically they were saying like, don't worry about using plastic straws. Don't obsess over tiny little things that will make no difference really in the big picture. You should focus on working with other people to um, push for climate friendly legislation, etc. I also, this is not, they're not doing new episodes right now, but I was also recently enjoying the podcast radio show In Our Time with Melvin Bragg. It's a BBC show. It's very calming because it's so stuffy. It's a very stuffy podcast with experts. There's always like an expert from Cambridge and an expert from Oxford and they're talking about something historical or scientific. And I love how you can just like hear them shuffling around their papers as they're talking. It's very comforting. But they um, recently replayed an episode about um, what we've learned about dinosaurs with feathers. Let's see. I didn't use a stitch marker here. I never use, or almost never use stitch markers, but with this kind of pointy tip. It's kind of hard to see the beginning sometimes. Okay, so this is my second knit round. So you've just knit two rounds after increasing to 18. Uh, the next round is a short row. Short round. Is that what you call it? No, it's short row. You're going to knit 15, wrap and turn, purl 12, wrap and turn, and then knit to the end of the round. So let's do it together. One. Wrap and turn. Working yarn goes between the needles, your two working needles, to come in front. You slip the next stitch purlwise onto the right needle. Working yarn goes back between the two needles that wraps the stitch. You can see a little bump there now. And you slip it back onto the left, left needle. And then you turn. That's the turn part of wrap and turn. And now you're working like you were working this flat, except you just keep everything on the double pointed needle, so now we're purling in this direction. We're going to purl 12. And now we're going to wrap and turn again after purling 12. Um, working yarn this time goes back between the two needles. Slip the next stitch purlwise, bring the working yarn back to the front, and then slip the stitch back. So now this stitch is wrapped, and then you turn again. And now we're just going to knit like normal to the end of the round, which will be 15 stitches. So that's the first wrap and first short row. Next round, we're just knitting all the way around. So knit 18. What's the other podcast? Oh, I can recommend my friend um, Scott Jones' podcast. 
It's called Heavily Pixelated. It is about video games, but it's very, it's a very um, high EQ podcast about video games. It's about how video games have like affected people's lives in, I think, positive ways, uh, and helped people through difficult times. And it's a really nice, like, different kind of perspective on video games and really good storytelling and I would recommend it. Okay, I think I just knit around. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the short, same short row again. Knit 15, wrap and turn. Purl 12, wrap and turn. Knit to the end of the round. Is the wrap and turn. Twelve, wrap and turn. Knit to the end of the round, which is fifteen. So that was our second wrap and turn, second short round, short, short row, wrap and turn, whatever. Um, knit one more round and then we'll do it again. So it's like short row, knit, short row, knit, short row. So this is a knit round, knitting 18. Let's see, I've been watching TV at night. I've been trying to just like totally relax in the evenings because my kids are a lot. They're two and four, and I'm really happy that they're at the age as they are because there's no pressure to actually school them at all. Um, they're too young for that, but they also can sort of play independently sometimes, and they're really very cute and fun. Um, they're also completely exhausting and infuriating too. Um, so that was a knit round. I think we're back to the beginning. Uh, so this is one more wrap and turn, but, um, I don't think I can talk during this and count my 15 stitches either at the same time. This is the last one. Part twelve.
another wrap and turn after purling 12. Oops. Turn. Okay, you can get to the end of rounds, 15 stitches. Anyway, so TV shows, I have been watching Mrs. America. It's on Hulu. It's excellent. It's about key women involved in um, pushing for or pushing against the ERA, Equal Rights Amendment, in the 70s. So much that, like, I've kind of, names I've sort of, like, vaguely heard of before, and it's nice to see those developed as people. It's fictionalized, but um, great casting and stuff. Um, okay, that was knitting the other round. Now we're not going to knit around. Now we're going to do a decrease round. So decreasing from 12, oh, sorry, from 18 to 12. So it'll be knit two together, knit one. We're really almost done with this. Knit two together, which is kind of self-explanatory. Needle goes under two stitches at once, and then you knit them together, and now you have one stitch, right? Hulu's been really coming through for me lately. They also have some good new movies. I never, never, never go to movies anymore. Like, it's been a long time. I think it's been more than a year since I went to a movie theater. So I'm already, I was, I'm pretty set for lockdown. I don't really leave the house that much as it is. But I've been watching movies, which I don't know really do. And I just watched Parasite, New Flash. It's really good. It made me so happy because just... As I was watching it, I just got happier and happier just seeing how great of a movie it is and knowing that it won Best Picture at the Academy Awards. That blows my mind because Best Pictures are usually like pretty lame, right? But it's like a very good movie. I recommend it. Um, stuffing now. So, okay, this is 12 stitches now. Good time to stuff because we're almost done. Um, you want to... I'm really bad at explaining how much stuffing to put in. Just like put enough in, right? Fill out the piece. You shouldn't be seeing too much between the stitches. In this case, because we have these wrap and turn stitches, you do have some, it's a little bit gappy, but it's not gonna be a problem because you're gonna put wings pretty much over that area. Um, so it shouldn't be like too deflated. You wanna fill it out, but don't, just don't stretch it too much. I might add like a tiny pinch at the top here. But I just, I don't think stuffing is something to get too worried about. Because if you don't stuff as much, it might just be a little skinnier. And if you kind of stuff it quite a bit, it'll be a little plumper. And either way is fine. That's my whole approach to toy knitting anyway, is that like, it's fine. Just keep going. It's going to be fine. If you have one wing that's longer than the other, it'll still be cute as long as it has little eyes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is knit two together all the way around. So you'll end up with six stitches. Stitches. Boop. Stitches are pretty tight at this point. Okay. The body's done. Let's use these scissors. Cut the yarn. I usually leave, I don't know, like that much of a tail, just so I have something to work with. And then put the tail onto a tapestry needle. And then you slip the needle through the stitches purlwise, just all the way around in order. And you slip them off as you do that. Pull them tightly, so they cinch together. There's our little bird body. Tapestry needle can go right back down in the center of those stitches you just closed up. You pull it out somewhere else in the body. And then just, you can just make an actual stitch and it'll be totally secure there. I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in this tail, tail tail too. Just 
so it doesn't get in the way. And this also, you can just kind of stick in anywhere. So it's a nice little shape. Next we'll do eyes. A little bit of black yarn. People have personal preferences for how they make their eyes, but I'll show you how I do mine in case it's helpful. I make little horizontal eyes. Can I thread that on a tapestry needle? Um, I go into the back of the body, then I'll leave a little tail out. I'm going to come out just to the left of where I want an eye to go, and I think for these guys I do, I don't even know where the stitch count down is, like four or five stitches from the top down, and then separated by like five or six knitted stitches. Um, you do want to pay attention to the way that the body is curving so that you're putting the eyes on the front and not the back. So I'm kind of, lo first I like locate my center front middle of the face. It does not have to be exact because it's just this kind of general curve, you know, to the body. Um, let's say, is that my center? Let's say this is my center. And I want to go like a few over from that right here. That seems good. Okay, I'm going to leave a little tail at the back. I'm going to make a little horizontal stitch. I'm going to go in just one half of a stitch over to the right. And when I come out, I'm going to split the black yarn. That does help hold it in place, but more so, more over, more importantly, it makes it kind of a circular, a circle eye more often than not. And then I'm going to bring my tapestry needle back out again to the left. Maybe I said right before, but I meant to say left of where I want the eye, eye to go. Do the same thing, half of a stitch over here, and split that black yarn. And then go back in the same place. You can kind of tug on this other tail too to kind of help tighten up the yarn. So that's pretty good, two little eyes. Um, maybe not necessary, but I do go ahead and weave in this, these tails. I go right back in where it comes out and just sort of trust that the stuffing will hold the yarn more or less. So in that sense, it will be woven in. Come on. Okay. These off. Next we'll do wings. Wings are placed about like a stitch outside of each eye. Why don't we do a little beak first? Won't that be fun? Let's do the beak first and then we'll do the wings, okay? The beak is very satisfying. It gives it a little face. Then we'll do wings. Beak is a two stitch I cord for four rows. So I'm going to cast on two stitches with my orange. I know bluebirds don't have orange beaks really, right? I love like finchy little orange beaks though. They're so cute. So two stitches, I slid, slid it down to the right end of the needle to do an I cord. I'm going to knit. There's one. And four. I forget what this color is called. Bright orange, maybe, or I'm not sure. It's very, very orange. Get the tail on the tapestry needle, slip the stitches off onto the tapestry needle, and pull tightly. And then it makes a nice tight little tip here. You're going to insert this tip right into the face. I'm like, it's just like right below or almost aligned with the eyes. Now, you could leave it kind of long, and that would be so cute. It would look a little bit like a hummingbird, but I like. Pulling most of the eye cord into the face, it's going to make it more secure. And that's very cute too, right? And like with the black yarn for the eyes, I'm just going to go straight back in where it comes out and kind of weave it in. I might weave it in a couple of times because 
this is a little more at risk of popping out. And then to get onto this, we just go again. If you hate weaving in ends, I am sorry. But look, you almost have an adorable bird. So that's the trade off. Do you like how that looks? If it's sticking out a little bit and you actually want it more in, I find that just opening up a pair of scissors and kind of poking at it a little bit can often do the trick. But that's super cute, right? And let's cut these. Okay, well now let's do wings. The wings are about a stitch outside of each eye and there are four stitches that you'll pick up. So it'll be like one, two, three, four, about a stitch on the body apart. Don't worry about making that exact, but you do have to do it upside down so that the knit side will be on the outside. So one stitch away, I'm gonna go right about here. It does not have to be exact, but it's helpful to try to make both wings consistent so they're not totally in different places, but not too hard to do that, I think, if you're counting your stitches. So um, so I insert the needle under the bar that's like between, or it's like between two, it's in the middle of a stitch, but it's upside down, so I don't know, whatever. It's horizontal. Um, I'm making this little loop with the yarn, just folding it so I can pull it tightly here and then dip my needle under, and that picks up the stitch. And then do the same thing three more times in a row, a row. This is not a loop, obviously. You're just like wrapping it around like you're knitting. But you, I have to kind of pinch my little body sometimes because the stitches are quite tight. But don't worry about kind of squishing the bird. Oh no, see? Picking up stitches can be a little tricky. We'll make it here. It, they don't really have to be so perfectly spaced. Okay, this we're gonna work the wing flat, which means you turn it. Pick these up, I'm turning it this way. I'm gonna purl. We're gonna do five, five rows of flat knitting. So it's a purl, so that's one. Knit. Pearl three knit is four and then pearl for five. So that's five rows of stockinette stitch. Next, you turn and you're just going to do knit two together twice. And do what you've been doing with the other ends. Get to your own tapestry mill and just slip the stitches off onto it to bind them together. I'm going to go ahead and weave this in. Now you can decide if you want your wings to go up, happy little wings, calm little wings, something in between. I think we could do something in between. Um, this does not have to be exact. This you're actually kind of weaving the tail in because you're going through a flat piece. But I just kind of go down through the tip somewhere, weave it under, just kind of poke under a few stitches, decide what part I want against the body. Maybe like here is good. And I'm going to make some little horizontal stitches to tack it down. And the tail just kind of goes through the body a little bit. And I'll do the other tail too. See, that's a nice little one. The trick with the other wing is because it's a right and a left, we're going to pick up the stitches 
from the other direction. So again, it'll be like a stitch out one, two, three, four, but we're going to start picking up here, right? Because you knit, pick up from right to left. We started here for this one, and now we're starting over here for this one. Let me count it out again. Let's see, that's one, two-ish, three, four. You can see I didn't quite center the body right with the eyes, but that's fine. Four stitches. And we'll work five rows of stockinette stitch again. Pearl knit, pearl knit, pearl. I've actually been like a little bit surprised at how calming I've found knitting. I guess just because it's sort of my work already and I always enjoy it but I always am doing it for a particular reason and I always have kind of some pressure with deadlines. But some of those deadlines have sort of been cancelled or taken off my shoulders lately so I'm letting myself do a bit of knitting that's kind of just kind of just for fun and that's where these blue words came from. I think that's five rows. That seems like five rows, right? Knit two together twice. So I hope that whatever you're going through working working with your hands is helping. I think it can't hurt when what you make is something sweet and small. And maybe I can do my knitting toys pitch here. I bet you're, you've already like been convinced if you're this far, but they don't use much for yarn. So a ball of yarn can make, this can make like, I don't know, 30 birds, maybe more. So you don't need a lot of materials. They're quick, totally finished product, pro project, sorry, in, less than an hour is pretty cool. So you can knit them quickly and then you can feel more free to give them to people and not worry about whether or not they love it or appreciate it enough. And because they're tiny, I think adults, grown people, don't feel so weird about it. If you gave somebody like a giant teddy bear that you made they might be like, what do I do with this? But a little tiny bird, they will put it on their desk or in their pocket. And every time they see it, they will think of you. And sweet things. Okay, that's a finished bird right there. We have made a little bird and I think this bird is perfect. Bird we will name. Um, I don't really usually name my things when I first make them. They just exist and I'm happy with that. Yeah, see the tail kind of goes this way. I don't know. That's okay with me. I don't care. Um, I will add, do a, a little extra thing with the with needle felting. I've been adding some needle felted details to make little funky birds and that's kind of fun. So I'll just do that really quick if you're interested. I don't usually needle felt that much, but sometimes I like it for a little added detail. So we can give our friend a fuzzy little belly and a funky hairdo. So I'm using wool roving, this really cool, I love this roving and it's lasted me for years. Isn't that gorgeous? I just use it for little details like gnome hairdos and stuff. I don't recall who made it and I 
Sorry about that. But I got it. I know that I got it at Yarn Con in Chicago, which is one of the many events that has, was canceled recently, sadly. But we'll return someday. We will have events again. And I'm just kind of holding it up against them. This is my needle felting needle tool poker. I don't know needle felting that well, so I don't know the terminology. I just poke it. I like the sound it makes. And yes, I do frequently stab myself doing this. No major injuries so far. I might like trim some of this. I don't know. I also don't know if this is like to do with needle felting usually if it's okay to just cut I think so <laughs> it's still looking pretty thick isn't it and then added more. Maybe I can trim it like this. It's really nice colors. I like how this one turned out with colors. I think we're getting somewhere with this. That looks pretty nice. And then we'll give him a little here too. Or her. Is it a her? I think it's a her. Wispy and happy. See what I'm doing. Just what you want to hear from your stylist. I don't know, I kind of love it. Here's our bird. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I hope you're staying safe out there and finding some weird, happy little things to keep you going. So we'll say bye-bye.